keynote speaker, Senator Bernie Sanders. second term in the U.S. Senate as the endorsed candidate of the Vermont Democratic Party. Prior to that, he served 16 years in the House of Representatives. Senator Sanders was appointed by the Democratic Senate leaders as the chairman of the Committee on Veterans Affairs and is now the ranking Democrat on the Budget Committee. In 1981, he was elected to his first of four terms as mayor of Burlington, Vermont during which time U.S. News named him as one of the 20 best mayors in America. As a student and civil rights activist in the 60s, Sanders was a frontline champion for equality. He was arrested protesting housing segregation at his college and marched on Washington with Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Senator Sanders was consistently defending working and middle class families and stood up for the excesses uh, stood up against the excesses of corporate America. Please join me in welcoming Senator Bernie Sanders. Andy, thank you very much for that generous introduction. Uh, and my wife, Jane, and I are just so delighted uh, to be in the great state of Iowa with you tonight. And I'm also delighted to be here uh, following uh, other remarks from uh, great Democrats who have dedicated their entire lives to public service. This is a great team, and I thank them all. Let me begin by suggesting something to you that I think very few candidates ever say. And that is, given the reality of economics and politics in America today, no president, not the best, can bring about the changes we need in this country unless there is a political revolution. And what that means, what that means in all honesty, is the powers that be in Washington, the billionaire class, the Koch brothers, the lobbyists, the corporate interests are so powerful that nothing will get done unless millions of people stand up and loudly proclaim, enough is enough. This country belongs to all of us and not a handful of billionaires. My point is that no president does it alone. We need a mass movement from coast to coast so that Republicans understand that when they give tax breaks to their billionaire friends, when they try to cut Social Security or Medicare, we know what's going on, and that vote will be their last term in Congress. And here's something else that all of us should know. Today, in our great country, we are the wealthiest country in the history of the world. Today, in the history of the world. But most Americans don't know that 
because almost all of the wealth rest in the hands of the few. America now has more wealth and income inequality than any major country on earth, and it is worse today than at any time since 1928. The issue of income and wealth inequality is the great moral issue of our time. It is the great economic issue of our time. It is the great political issue of our time. And together, that is an issue that we will address. Let me be as clear as I can be. There is something profoundly wrong when the top one-tenth of one percent own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. There is something profoundly wrong when one family, the owners of Walmart, own as much wealth as the bottom 40 percent of the American people. There is something profoundly wrong when millions of workers are working longer hours for lower wages, when we have by far the highest rate of childhood poverty in the industrialized world, and almost all new wealth and income goes into the hands of the few. Enough is enough. That has got to end, and together we will end it. This campaign is sending a profound message to the billionaire class. You can't have it all. You can't get huge tax breaks when children in America go hungry. You cannot continue to send our jobs to China when millions of Americans are looking for work. You cannot hide your profits in the Cayman Islands and in other tax havens when there are massive unmet needs in this country. The greed of the billionaire class has got to end, and we are going to end it for them. But it is not just income and wealth inequality. It is the fact that we have millions of people working longer hours for low wages. And that is why we have got to raise the minimum wage to a living wage. Nobody in America who works 40 hours a week should be living in poverty. And that is why I have led the effort in the United States Senate, not only against NAFTA, CAFTA, and permanent normal trade relations with China, but I'm leading it against this disastrous TPP trade agreement. When 33 percent of white kids between 17 and 20 who graduated high school are unemployed, when 36 percent of Hispanic kids are unemployed who graduated high school, when 51 percent of African American kids who graduated high school are unemployed, we need a massive jobs program to put our people back to work. And when our infrastructure, our roads, our bridges, our water system, our rail system is crumbling, there is more than enough work to do. Let's rebuild our infrastructure, create millions of decent paying jobs. Today, the United States of America, embarrassingly, remains the only major nation on earth that does not guarantee health care as a right for all people. 
I voted for the Affordable Care Act, and it has done a lot of good. But there are still 35 million Americans with no health insurance and many more who are underinsured. Now is the time for us to say loudly and proudly, America will join the rest of the industrialized world with a Medicare for all single-payer program. And when my Republican colleagues, as they have done for years, tell us that we have got to cut Social Security, despite the fact that millions of seniors are trying to survive on 12, 13,000 a year, what we say is, no, you're not going to cut Social Security. We're going to expand Social Security by lifting the cap on taxable income. My Republican colleagues in the Senate talk about family values. You all know what they're talking about. Their family values say that a woman does not have the right to control her body. I disagree. They say a woman should not be able to get the contraceptives she needs. I disagree. They say they say that our brothers and sisters who are gay should not be able to enjoy the same marriage rights that heterosexual couples enjoy. We disagree. But we also have family values, not based on hatred, but based on love and compassion. Our family values say that when a woman has a baby, she should get 12 weeks of family and medical leave to stay home with her baby. Now, there is another issue out there that must be addressed, because perhaps it is the most important issue of all, and that is to understand that the Supreme Court's decision on Citizens United is moving this country toward an oligarchic form of society because it is allowing billionaires to buy elections with super PACs and unlimited sums of money. It should not be acceptable to any American, conservative, moderate, progressive, that the Koch brothers alone an extreme right-wing family will spend more money in this campaign cycle than either the Democratic or the Republican Party. When one family spends more money than either of the two major political parties, brothers and sisters, that is not democracy. That is the path of oligarchy. That's why Citizens United must be overturned. I have, not made, I have not made many promises in this presidential campaign, but here's one I have made. No nominee of mine to the Supreme Court will be made unless that man or woman is clear that he or she will vote to overturn Citizens United. And furthermore, we've got to go further. We have got to, in my view, move to public funding of elections so that anybody can run for office without being dependent on the wealthy and the powerful. At my table here this evening, I have seven or eight wonderful young people. And the reason that I ask them to join me tonight is to highlight a tragedy in this country. These young people collectively 
owe more than $1 million in student debt. I have introduced legislation and will fight as President of the United States to make certain that every public college and university in America is tuition free. We must also significantly reduce student debt. It is insane that people in this room are paying 8, 9, 10 percent interest rates on student debt when you can refinance your home for 2 or 3 percent. And we're going to do that. And when we talk about our responsibility as adults, what that means is that we have the moral obligation to make certain that we leave this planet for our kids and our grandchildren in a way that is habitable. It is an international embarrassment that my Republican colleagues refuse, by and large, to even acknowledge the reality of climate change, let alone are prepared to do anything about it. In my view, this nation must and can lead the world in transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energies like wind, solar, and geothermal. And like everybody in this room, I want to see an America where when young black men walk down the street, they will not be harassed by police officers, they will not be killed, they will not be shot. To his credit, to his credit, to his credit, President Obama did something extraordinary the other day. He had the courage to go to a federal jail and talk about the absurdity of a criminal justice system in which, if we don't change it, one out of four male African Americans born today will end up behind bars. That is not the America we believe in. And that's why, that is why we believe that it makes more sense to invest in jobs and education, not jails and incarceration. And to our 11, and to our 11 million brothers and sisters, and to our 11 million brothers and sisters who are living in the shadows today, we say loudly and we say clearly, we are going to bring you out of the shadows and in a path toward citizenship. And we're not going to divide families up. Brothers and sisters, we are the wealthiest nation in the history of the world. There is nothing we cannot accomplish. Please don't think small. Think big. Think about a future where our kids get the best education in the world, where our young people have the jobs and education they need, where women's rights are protected. That is the America we can become if we stand together and not let them divide us up by race, by gender, by sexual orientation. Let us stand together. Let us remake America together. Thank you very much.